I'm uncomfortable now. I'm uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I'm uncomfortable. Anyway, right. so hi guys, anyway, welcome yeah, what's back. Going on? Are we rolling? That's a Who surprise cares? like last time. Who cares? What's going on? One one five jams. Uh, Lupe Fiasco. I think you've heard of him. I what's think up? I, yeah, I think I'm, you might have. Mm. That might be my name. This is gonna be just <laughs> all right. Hey, check it out, Lupe. Uh, first of all, you're from the Chi Town, Chicago. So the Bears. What I about? need to ask you about Jay no, Cutler since don't. everyone no. else is commenting on Jay listen, Cutler. Listen, listen. Yeah, no, I like this where this is going. Go ahead. Comment on Jay Cutler. We're not talking about that. Okay, we're not, we're not talking, talking about, about the Bears. <laughs> we can talk about the Bulls and the Blackhawks, but we're not talking about the Bears, the Sox, the Cubs. All word? We're not talking about any of that. Hey, the Sox have won in the last 10 years. You, you can... Now What's the Cubs, is, you add another zero to that, and then, yeah. then we're talking about it's them. It's been a but. thousand years, son. <laughs> it's been a thousand years. <laughs> No, but but I'm not aware. Honestly, I'm not aware of the Jay Cutler situation. I just got back from from Australia. Okay, well apparently so he injured his knee in the first half, more like the first quarter. I would say. And which, which game is this? This is when they lost to the Packers. Okay. And you could have said the Green Bay Packer game. You didn't have to say when they lost to the Packers. I was, that I'm was, tired that was of you correcting jab. me already. Today. It's jabby. too early for me too. You know that I jab. work nights. It was a little jab. Um, and apparently the second half, he claimed that he wanted to come back out. But the bear staff was like, no, no way. And everyone was just clowning and saying he kind of wussed out. Okay, so what, what? what? So my question, well, I mean, if you were inclined to the sports world, then I guess this question could have gone somewhere else. But I guess we can talk about, like, mountains or something <laughs> Yeah, like why don't we do I tried not to talk about it. But you, right. you just wanted me Forget to just it. talk about it. What did I say? I was like, you know what? Let's not talk about that. Forget it. The Packers won. The Jets lost. He's a Jets fan, so we all have problems, correct? Take that, Jets. Yeah, pow. Should <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually, a, 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 I'm a Bears fan by default, but I'm a Saints fan. Oh, jeez. Take that. Bandwagon, dude. We have a bunch of bandwagon people Who that that? coming through here. Um, all right, so let's talk about the album. You lay zers, not lasers. Lasers. Lay zers. Lasers. You, now you have Trey. Mm -hmm. You have John Legend. Mm -hmm. You already said your favorite song. Oh, Black Everything. So I actually wanted to talk to you about. Um, the political record you kind of came out with. Words I never said. Right, correct. Was there someone politically or a political situation that led you to write that song, or was that how did that song come about? No, I've, I've through my whole career I've been somewhat vocal about you know my political stance, mm -hmm. and my social stance. Um, I, my on my first album I had a song called American Terrorist. Right. Um, you know, and it touched, it was the, built kind of the same way. It's almost like words I never said is like an American terrorist too. And so a lot of my, like the, the Lupe Fiasco fans and stuff are saying, it's like, yo, it's like American terrorist, but better. Um, you know, is is really for me, I, I consider myself somewhat apolitical, mm -hmm. but at the same time too, you know, I don't vote, you know, but I pay taxes, you know, <laughs> and I, I think it's like, well, I pay taxes, so I should be able to critique like a bastard, you know what I'm right, saying? It's absolutely. like because you only vote once, what every four years. I pay mm -hmm. taxes every year, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and they're not small taxes. Yeah, they're either. not small taxes at all. I actually, I literally pay for the bomb. I could pay for a whole <laughs> bomb myself. No, honestly. So, it, so when I look at that right. and I see, you know, you'll get some footage or some crazy story from some part of the world where the bomb that's lodged in the side of the school says "Made in USA" on the side of it. Right. You know, for me, it's like, you know, I have a real part in that. You know, I really pay for that. And there was there was some study that said like two dollars and fifty cents of everybody ta of everybody's taxes goes to, you know, military defense. You know. So everybody in America is slightly responsible, you know, for the aggression and the Absolutely. foreign policy of the US in a in a visceral material way. Um, you know, two dollars and fifty cents, that's a couple bullets, you know. Um so for me I feel like you just I have the duty and I have the responsibility and I also have the the the, the will to actually go out and make songs. Like uh, words I never said, and 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 touch on a lot of different topics and critique a lot of different things that I see, because for one I'm a part of it, I pay for it, um, you know, and I think it's it's just being being you know the the sticking to what my my artistic kind of thing is, which is to bring balance, to bring balance in the game, to be a balance in the hip hop world, to be a balance on the radio, um, to give the other side of the story, so to speak, you know. And if some people like it, some people don't, but you know, you got to know what you want, and right. that's kind of what I want. All right, cool. Uh, well, I was going to ask my followers on Twitter some questions that I should ask you, but 
I don't have a lot of them, but I do. <laughs> I do have a lot of Facebook friends. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got a, I got like a million Facebook friends. So forget people asking, "Hey, I'm about to interview Lupe. What should I ask?" I went to Facebook, Lupe, because that's and, where my people are. And what did Mark, the the legions of Markians, say? He wanted to know, do you feel in the in the game that you are underrated? No, not really. I don't. I don't feel that. I feel like I've never done commercial music. Right. You know, Lasers would be the first time that I've ever actually did some commercial music, to be Superstar, honest. Superstar, no? But it wasn't It wasn't meant to be commercial. It was just a hmm. good song. You right. know, it wasn't like, hey, I want to go get on TMZ today. You know, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like kind of that situation or that, that focus. Um, but, you know, I get, I'm respected by everybody in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I tour ridiculously, you know, with no albums. You know, I'm staying on tour for two years. Um, you know, I I get a lot of kudos and Grammy. Not every album I've ever done has got multiple Grammy nominations. I got Grammys. I got did GQ Man of the Year. I got this. I got that. So it's like I got all these different accolades and all these different things. And that's oh six. You know, so I don't really look at it like that. You know, I just think it's people comparing me to commercial space because I don't have a million Twitter followers. People think Neither that that's I. a rating of like, hey, you don't have a million Twitter followers, so you're not commercially this, so you're kind of underrated or, you know. But it's like, nah, I'm. No. I'm just saying, but you've had pretty good longevity. That's why I say, I mean, you've been able to, re- to stick around. You were on Kanye's tour. You kill mm-hmm. it on stage. So, mm-hmm. all right, I see where you're coming from. Second. And with just two albums. What? And with just, just two just albums. Just two albums. I only have two albums. This will be the, my third album, you know? Good stuff. Well, I mean, it seems like, you know, you're pushing a little mainstream, too, because you're having someone like Trey on your album, mm-hmm. who is kind of mm-hmm. mainstream. Mm-hmm. Um, second, do you have, like, an ultimate high at this point in your career, and do you have an ultimate low? Um, my ultimate high is anytime I'm on stage. You know, anytime I'm 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 out, microphone in hand. You know, band behind me or DJ behind me and fans in front of me. You know, that's the ultimate of high. You know what I'm saying? Craziest arena that you've that you've performed in front of? Uh, Dublin, Ireland. They have a, a a place out there. There's this like a train station or something like that. And when I remember we first did kick, it was with Kanye tour, and we did kick push, and the place went nuts. Like you couldn't hear your, you couldn't, I couldn't hear myself on stage. It was so loud. That's that's got it. That gave you goosebumps. Yeah, super super goosebumps. Ultimate low, dude. You gotta have one. Um, ultimate low. The music business, man. The music business was my ultimate low. Putting 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 this record together, putting lasers together was a a very very low point for me. You what? Know? How so? Because it was just the, the the creative battle and the things that I went through with with my record company was just so massive, you know. And, and in the midst of I'm a regular person, right? You know, so I have personal triumphs and tragedies and traumas and things running parallel to being in the music business, you know. So you're fighting through the music business stuff, and you're still fighting through your personal stuff. And the music business stuff got so hectic for me; it was like super low. Are you saying like in a way that maybe? the label is trying to push you in more of a commercial way no it it wasn't even that because when we went into doing lasers that was kind of like our point you know it was Mm -hmm. like we want this album to be more popular you Mm -hmm. know not necessarily a pop record right but we want it to be popular you know so all the all the aspects and everything that we put into the album was like yo let's do a club song you know it couldn't hurt for the fiasco do a club record why not um and different things like that it was more so just the mechanics of getting the stuff done um was 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 very like low for me i actually like i'm talking low like suicide low you know Word. so i touch i touch on it on a song called beautiful lasers on lasers um and it was really dark and people was like yo for real it's like yeah well because the album ha- was pushed back a little bit i i remember yeah. right like mm-hmm. this was supposed to come out a while mm-hmm. ago mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. and every little piece and part and reason for that is is very like you know some of it was stuff that you could brush off and it's like all right whatever and some of the stuff was just really like oh this is crazy hey man i appreciate you coming through <laughs> looking forward it, to lasers man march 8th march 8th that's the date the show goes on that's my record right now thank you sir if appreciate i want to knock that. somebody out that's what i'm playing come on man it's not meant to be I'm just it's not kidding. meant to be like no that. i know whenever i feel like i just want to walk on the beach and stuff <laughs> like that i just put that you know in my dre headphones and then the show uh, goes funny. on Cry a little bit. Cry a little bit. No <laughs> doubt. Appreciate you coming through, my Appreciate man. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. All right, dude. <laughs> One on five, Jess.